Uh oh, I better make this kind of quick. I'm late. I'm late. Too late. Hello, folks. Welcome. Welcome back to the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. A lot of stuff to get into tonight because I'm running late because last night I was just tired. Um, the whole Royal Rumble kind of work schedule kind of had me zonked, had me, had me feeling funky Monday. I had to catch up on some sleep on Tuesday, and then I'm like, oh, just too tired. But I'm here. Um, it's going to be kind of a two-part show. We've Impact and NWA to go through. NWA is going to be pretty quick because I think it was, for the most part, a highlight show. Tomorrow, probably sometime in the afternoon. I'll be doing my AEW review unless something very good happens. But I don't know. I give my doubts about that, but that's okay. Because one day I will have a girlfriend somewhere in this chair, or in, hopefully in a better chair, next to me. Uh, let's start off with a little recap. Um, so I made predictions for NWA, the NWA pay-per-view, World's Collide, and Royal Rumble. I already rated myself as to what I did on the Royal Rumble. That was a fun show. So if the NWA hard times, ooh, yeah, I got that right. I did bad. <laughs> I did not get one match right in the television title. Um, yeah, that's not good. That's already minus. I I, I couldn't believe I didn't get one right. So that's one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I, I was bad. However, with the exception, I do terrible in these matches too. The triple threat matches, I can never guess right. Uh, James Storm and Eli Drake actually won. They defeated the Rock and Roll Express. Um, everything else I got right. So if it wasn't for that. TV title tournament, I, I couldn't buy a clue. Um, Nick Aldit, um first of all, Scott Siren won because he is a genetic freak. Thunder Rosa won. She defeated Allison K. Actually, probably which was the match of the night. And Nick Aldis retained his belt in my Stone Cold Lock. Wow, because I got everything wrong, that was a nap. Let's see here. I got eight... Nine wrong, three right, plus one and a half for the for the qualifier. So that's four and a half. That's yeah, still not good. I'm I'm just a mark with NWA. However, when it came to Worlds Collide, I do know my NXT a little bit better, and I, which is scary because I'm beginning to learn trends and tendencies that NXT has. Um, Mia Yim lost to, to Kaylee Ray. Kaylee Ray retained her title. Uh, that was probably, from what I've heard, kind of something to nap through, too. My Stone Cold Lock came true. Um, Finn Balor taking on Ilja Dragunov. My Stone Cold Lock. Finn Balor won as he should. And in the match of the night, DIY did defeat Mustache Mountain. Amazing match. Another one I got right. Again, I cannot get these multi-man matches right to save my life. Jordan Devlin is now the Cruiserweight Champion, also known as Foreman's Poor Man's Finn Balor. Um, he could probably show up as Finn, and Finn could be the demon. I want to know the difference. So I got that wrong. And however, I did guess correctly on the Imperium taking on with beating the Undisputed Era. They went there and Rhea Ripley retained her title. Um let's see here, just some news and notes. DIY they have new outfits. I like it. I like the new shirts. It has this a black art logo with it says the Blackheart flag with the, where the, if you think of the American flag in black and white, except for where the stars are, there is the kind of weird, unsmiley face of Johnny Gargano. That's a cool shirt. 
I might, I don't know. I might have to get that shirt. That's pretty cool though. Um, also Wolf, Alexander Wolf, I hope he's doing good. He got like legit knocked out. Um, I think it was by Bobby Fish. Bobby Fish should know better. I mean, he gets beat up the most. But in this case, I was inside the head of one Hunter Hearst Helmsley. So that kind of wraps up the whole weekend. Um, I don't have another pay per view to watch for a while. Um, it's going to be, geez, still a freaking while until I can do live stream. I have to. I think I'm smart enough. I know what I can do. I know what I can't do. I can't do anything really for the WWE besides give commentary. And so with New Japan, but I only watch New Japan like three, four times a year. Uh, Impact. Yes, he. AAA is still the best, though. And I don't even want to deal with NWA because it's all probably copyrighted on YouTube, and that would not be good. Of all that being said, let's talk about some Impact Wrestling. And to begin the show, Toys for Thoughts. Thank you, sir. You, sir, have earned the six count. And Dave Sanders, you sir are a master of the air guitar.
So Impact starts off again. They're back on Twitch. Hey, we've only had one week suspension. Wait a second. I should get on Twitch one day. All the bad things I do. Indeed. Maybe YouTube's not the way to go. Maybe I'll be on Twitch. I, I trust. I, I, I have to. That means like more research and more work for me. Right now, I'm loaded with work. And my one job where I'm happy at, I work the races. And. I start scoring again. So that's good. Yes, 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 yes. I'll be able to throw oh, mini quarters on the floor and swim in quarters like Scrooge McDuck would. Let's talk about some Impact Wrestling. Um, first, they start a recap about uh, last week, which is always good. It's always good to see, kind of, especially especially what happened on on Twitch with them. So the first match, it's Josh Alexander taking on Io del Vikingo. I didn't realize Io del Vikingo is actually like Latin. I just thought it was like, why did I think he was paler looking? I don't know. Maybe Triple A made him do that. Who knows? He could be enjoying the Um, I didn't realize those some of those luchadors are short, too. Like, Iho del Vikingo, he's tiny. Josh Alexander is not big. Iho del Vikingo, he's not big either. He's actually shorter than Josh Alexander, a little bit smaller. It's always hard to tell because he does wrestle in his full gear. Right, Cheese Pup? Yep. And my cat's there. You probably saw her sneak in. She knows this is weird because I'm normally not here now. I should be at the gym. And I'm going to be at the gym soon. But today's a leg day. Nice and quick, though. Which is always good. Um, I'll tell you what. Iho del Vikingo. His Lucia skills, sir. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. If you see me staring at my camera, I want to make sure I don't. I don't fuzz my camera up because whenever I go too quick, the camera can't catch it right away. Especially with a free program I'm using. Um, again, he did a double rope drop kick into a hurricanrana. So much lucha chain wrestling. This was fast. This was a very fast-paced match. They didn't mention Baby Yoda. I think I heard that Disney's trying to copyright Baby Yoda so no one can use it in memes anymore. Because I know there's a there was a whole bunch of memes with Baby Yoda like pushing things on the Mandalorian ship, like hit the bodies, and then he turned off, hit the bodies, hit the bodies, and then of course the final time, hit the bodies, hit the bodies. and everything shakes, and the Mandalorian's very upset with Baby Yoda, but Baby Yoda's cool though, you know Baby Yoda's a killer, and I'll probably get copyright violated for for saying Baby Yoda, I don't know. That's always fun when they mention things. And really, if they only mention a few cultural things like that, I'm fine. I just, listen, no, no, Moro. I don't want to hear any more Moro. Just, I know all about the Marvel Universe already. I know my music, Moro. That's why I don't like NXT. I don't like watching NXT unless it's live. It's way too much overload. And I think they've really gone all in because it's been... Oh, wow. When was that match? It had to be... No, because... Wow, it's been a good couple of months. NXT has been Daytona Beach. They might never come back to Daytona Beach again. Sorry, folks. Actually, I haven't seen them in Sanford either. That's not good. That's a very bad trend. But enough about NXT. Um, again, this was so fast he can't blink. Um, again, he tried to he tried to walk the the, the rope. Uh, he almost botched it up, but he turned into a Mexican arm drag. Josh Alexander really saved him a lot. That was pretty cool. Um, I'll tell you what. He took a nasty bump from a power slam by Josh Alexander. That was pretty good. But then it's, Io del Vikingo is a roll! Or he flies. I have no idea what I just said, by the way. 
Uh, then there was a double guardrail acai moonsault. I didn't even know that was possible. The way it's set up, there's a guardrail. There. So, 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 so here's the ring, okay? So the ring's over here. There's a guardrail to separate the rest of the wrestlers in the ring from the first row. And then because it's kind of like a stadium setup, there's a second guardrail up top and elevated for like plebes and, and poor people like me. It's, it's in the hobo section. So it's El Vagabundo section. So El Vikingo jumped up to the one guardrail. So he's up here now. I don't have enough hands, but there. And then he jumped up to the second guardrail and did a moon salt onto Josh Alexander. Whoa. That was awesome. Uh, Josh Alexander hit like a powerbomb backbreaker. Then there was like a Rana driver. I, I didn't even know how to how to describe that. But like a Hurricanrana, but he like drove him ahead first into the ring. That looked awesome. Normally, you, from a Hurricanrana, you fall on your back. He did like a Rana. I jumped up, hit the Hurricanrana, but when Josh Alexander was in like midair, he hit him with a driver and it's like, I didn't even know that was possible. And then I don't know if it's a cultural thing, but when Iho del Vikingo won, they actually began to throw money in the ring. Um, they were like throwing coins in the ring. I don't know if that's a thing in Mexico. Um, I know when I went to a strip club in Canada once, uh, someone tried to throw a Canadian loon, which is like the coin version of the dollar, at one of the ladies for us, and she took the coin and said, cheap bastard, and threw it back. Whoa. So, I don't know. It might be a thing in Mexico. If, if you love the performance, yep, toss them a couple pesos. I have no idea. Um, I don't quite know what they would do if you would throw wrestlers ring wrestlers in the ring money here in the US. Um, some women might do some interesting things. Some men might do interesting things. But I think they would be confused and you'd probably get us squared out. Because you're not really throw us this, throw stuff in the ring, but there are I know there are places with cultural differences where they do appreciate things a little bit differently. I don't know if Mexico's like that, though. Um, but that was an amazing match. Ejo, again, Ejo del Vikingo won. I was shocked in everything they did. This was a filet mignon match. And then there was a Taya Valkyrie promo uh, kind of interview thing. It was okay. So you have them speak to people. Then we have the Rascals taking on Pagano and Margaret Cloud. There are so many clowns in AAA. That's what I look forward to Triple Mania all the time. Again, if you'd like to see what Triple Mania is like, you can go back. I didn't get to watch the whole thing last time. I think I missed, I think, like a match and a half. That's not too bad. You get a really good feel for Triple Mania. And as long as it's free on Twitch, I will be streaming Triple Mania again sometime in August. Because Triple Mania is cool. So with the Rascal, and they have like all the clowns. They have Pagano and Murder Clown. There's like Murder Clown, Psycho Clown, Regular Clown, Pagano, who's a clown, um, Undead Clown, Chessman. I have no idea. Oh, in fact, I have to do that to send her Pagano's because she would like that, I think. Um, but enough about that, though. The Rascals, they look confused. Des looks absolutely terrified. He's like, I don't want anything to do with a guy named Murder Clown. And Pagano looks like he just, I don't know. From like, um, oh, what is it? The Insane Clown Posse Circus. I forget what it's called now. The Circus of Horror or something. But Des was like, I'm not getting that ring. Um, Wentz started, and Tez, and every time Wentz was in the corner, Dez is like, nope, I'm not tagging you. Uh, 
eventually he, he he does not want to get involved. Pagano does like some clown dance. I have no and I can't risk another copyright violation yet. So I, I couldn't show it. Um, then there was a reverse springboard suplex, which was awesome. I mean, the amazing luch tag work, the double team suplex, like swap and splash, and oh, it was the action was all over the place. Eventually, does did get involved. They start doing all the crazy rascal stuff. They fly so much. Again, this was another amazing, fast-paced, lucha-style pace. And people say they don't like the lucha style. I love this stuff. I eat this up. This is great. Again, you can tell by my Southern Pro Lucha Libre shirt. Yes, I show, so proudly wear. Uh, it's just fun and amazing. It, it's different. It, it, I, I, I can't appreciate when two guys slog it up. Yeah, that's okay. I can also appreciate when they go flying off everything. Again, this match, even though the Rascals won, I'll tell you what, Pagano and Murder Clown looked absolutely amazing. This was a surf and turf match. My hat's off to Impact for making the guys from AAA look absolutely amazing. Let's see here. See if we can get this done hopefully under 10 minutes. And then we get Moose versus Toros. Oh, wow. Animal Kingdom versus Animal Kingdom. The North, Animal of the North and Moose versus Animal of the South. Toros! El Toro! The Bull. And there was a trade of chops. Oh! Oh, that had a hurt. And then there's a straight kick to the gut. Wow. And I've never seen a flying Taurus before this. He can fly. And then, of course, Moose! 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 All aboard the Moose. Because it's from, um, he's from Moose somewhere, USA anyway, so. Uh, Taurus hit a 619. Everyone hits a 619. Well, at least, at least the Luchador said 619. Maybe, I, I could, I could see AAA doing a bunch of 619, so. Uh, and then again, those tra trade of headbutts. Oh, one guy would just go, wow. Another guy would go, oh. And then he would just come back, wow. Like, oh, that can't be healthy. As long as there's no. Oh, what did Shibata have? He had a cranial hemorrhage, I think. As long as someone got a cranial hemorrhage, I forget exactly what happened to Shibata, but it was like during a headbutt. And this is like, ooh, there was like blood on the brain and stuff. And it's like, ugh, that's not good. That kind of cost him his match. Then Moose eventually hit the no need for Jackhammer Spear. Uh, pin Tauros. Again, Tauros looked great during this match. Um, then Rhino enters the ring, gores Moose, and of course everyone likes that because everyone likes Moose. But this was a really good cheeseburger match. And there's a Joey Ryan promo. Uh, Joey Ryan talks about Kill oh God. I don't know why he's talking about Katie Forbes and, and Rob Van Dam. They want to get banned from Twitch for two weeks. So that, that would be a foursome. Rob Van Dam, Katie Forbes, Katie Forbes' girlfriend, and Joey Ryan. Whoa. We need to tranquil a little bit here, folks. And then it kind of. Joey Ryan's because Joey Ryan said Katie Forbes wants to touch it. And then we get a women's threesome, no, I mean women's three weight. <laughs> Could have been a threesome. Uh, Madison Rain versus Kiara Hogan versus Jordan Grace. And oh my goodness. Kiara Hogan, he has one juicy booty. <laughs> P H A T. Boutte! Yes. Madison has none. And Dorian Grace just looks like a normal woman. Uh, starts off Madison, Rain, and Kira Hogan starts a double team drawing, which is smart. Dorian Grace is the bigger of the two. More powerful. Eventually, Dorian takes on both. Uh, she does hit a 
suplex times two. After she takes a little bit of a beating, she counters again the double suplex and turns into a suplex times two by herself. And then Kiara Hogan hit an assisted Salida del Sol. Again, um, Kalisa uses that move. It's a really big move in Lucha. Again, so, so, paying so, so much homage to the Lucha tradition. But they are in Mexico, and they are partnering with Triple Eight, so that makes sense. Um, Hess and Reina eventually stop Kiara from getting the pin. Again, Mass and Reina wants the pin. Uh, Jordan Grace, again, just hit like some kick, kick to the head. Ouch, that looked nasty. Uh, then Mass and Reina, so Jordan got tossed outside. Uh, they rock Mass and Reina and Kiara Hogan rock paper scissors. For it, Kara Hogan got the scissors. Madison Rain got the piece of paper. Scissors cut paper. Madison Rain had to go outside, bring Jordan Grace in because because there's no count out. Uh, Kiara Hogan, however, eats the Gracie driver. Not the smartest thing in the world. Madison Rain just just besides herself couldn't get in the ring quick enough. Jordan Grace wins. Grace is now the next person in line to take on Ty Valkyrie. I think in February something, whenever the next pay-per-view is. But again, this was a fun match. It's a cheeseburger match. Then Ace Austin gives a promo. Ace Austin, he has his t-shirts. Ace Austin 316 says, says, I just banged your wife. Ace Austin 317. That'd be a good idea, though. Says, I just banged um, he's Ace Austin. He's a scumbag from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Atlantic City, New Jersey. Bad folks. I used to live outside of it. It's it's actually pretty decent and fun if you're over if you're over 21. Again, be over 21. And then there's a little thing between Johnny Mac and uh, uh, I'm sorry, Willie Mac and Johnny Swinger. Yeah, whatever. Then we had what should have probably been the main event. So that, that would have been great. It was Reno Scum taking on Daga and Dr. Wagner Jr. Bien, bien, bien. Uh, this was actually probably the worst match of the night, though. Uh, Dr. Wagner, he, he comes out in his mask, but because he lost his mask, he can no longer wrestle in his mask. It's lucha rules, folks. Um... For the most part, Dr. Wagner, he gets beat up a lot. Uh, there was some good mo good moments between Daga and Dr. Wagner Jr. I'm actually surprised Reno Scum actually won this match. I wasn't happy about that. But, wait, did they bang? Yeah, I think, yeah, they, they lost. Reno Scum actually won. No. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. Dr. Wagner Jr. Daga won. You're not going to have Dr. Wagner lose. Again, Daga hit the turtle stomp. And I'll tell you what. They did that. Uh, Lester does that headbutt. Whew. That's vicious looking. Uh, the one thing, my only problem with this, again, Dr. Wagner hit a Michinoku driver. They try to call it something else. Everyone knows what that is. That's the Michinoku driver. It was really botchy, though. You could tell there were a bunch of screw ups. Uh, Dr. Wagner did a cannonball, and oh, I thought he was about, I thought he almost killed himself on that. It's good to see him, because he kind of like had the back of the other, of Reno, of the one guy of Reno Scum. He's like, yep, I'm good. Don't worry about me. Uh, it was kind of sloppy. Uh, it wasn't that good. I don't even remember. You know, I think Reno Scum won, actually. No, I'll just say Dr. Wagner Jr. Bien, Bien, Bien. And Daga won. They defeat Reno Scum. Reno Scum's jobbers for life. So with all that being said, that, that was okay. Um, then we had a little thing between Susie. Susie's so cute. And Rosemary. And, and Rosemary gives Susie... Um, the Undead Bride's old wrestling attire and says, you want to remember, right, Susie? 
Like, I don't know. They, they, Rosemary was getting a little close for comfort there with Susie. Gonna plant a big, fat, sloppy, wet, with tongue kiss on Susie. Ugh. Actually, yeah. But who knows? Yeah. Rosemary is, I think she's only a few years younger than me. I think she's been divorced once. She's Canadian. Susie's cute, though. Then in the main, in the real main event, it was Mike Elgin taking on Eddie Edwards for the first of their best of five matches. Um, this match started off pretty good. It was a classic collegiate style of match to start off. I can appreciate that. That's really fun to watch. Um, the impressive chain wrestling, move after move, counter wrestling. It's actually really fun. See, this is a nice refreshing break from all the lucha action. They see lucha, 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 lucha. Classic wrestling match. That classic wrestling match stands out, and it's good. Uh, the lucha stuff is amazing, unless you're sloppy like like uh, Daga and Reno Scum are, because Reno Scum they probably never did lucha style wrestling ever. Um, and that ring seemed bigger though. I know, even on the CML CMLL Univision TV show when I when I had TV, the ring looked bigger for some reason. I know WWE uses standard 20 by 20s. I think AEW, at least on the cruise, I think used an 18 by 18 because it seemed a little bit smaller. But that makes sense, though. I for some reason that that ring looks big. I don't know if it's 22 squared or 24 squared, but it just looks different, though. Here, that or the Lucha doors are that. I mean, compared to the giants you're used to seeing in WWE, so. Uh, it might be a thing of perception, too. Uh, again, press of chain wrestling is so good. Uh, Eddie does his dive, of course, because he's Eddie Edwards. Uh, and then he gets he gets caught in, like, a power bomb. Instead of power bomb, he takes him and swings him right into the barricade. I don't get tired of that. Then they trade forearms for a while. Uh, Elgin eventually hits the reverse tiger driver. That looked like an amazing finisher. Because what that means is that so reverse tiger driver. His arms were held, held behind his back. He came up. So Eddie Edwards' head's facing his butt and just fell onto the ground. Yeah, that's some, that should be just someone's finisher. And uh, then the German suplex. Then, of course, they did the yay boost. And you finished off the top rope Death Valley driver. This was a fun, this was a fun match. Mike Elgin takes one of five matches. And a really good cheeseburger match. And that was Impact. That was a nice, fresh change. I, I'm enjoying the Lucha stuff. I just want Impact to come back to Orlando so I can actually see it live and show you guys what Impact's like actually live. Let's take a little break. And now that I'm back, yes, let's talk about some NWA. <laughs> and I, I, find it, I find it funny that there was some guy with a busted open promo card in the front row that had a um, uh, bully array and whoever he does the busted open show with. I, I'm, I find it surprising that they allowed that in the arena. I don't know. I'm just used to WWE being that fun. Uh, starts off, Nick Aldis, he does an inter interview and promo. A little bit of highlights. And it was a very highlight heavy. Highlights from the um, tag team triple threat match. And, and Faye Valentine, she might have a pink dress, but it's all white underneath. Um, of course, uh, Roy Sizes comes out and he takes on Andre Gunn. Yeah, this is just a glory. This is actually a pretty decent match. Um, Isaacs. Yeah, and he just a uh, straight punch to the gut. He works over on Andre Gunn. What would you expect? No one knows who Andre Gunn is. Andre Gunn does get a bit of offense in. And again, it's not a total squash match. Uh, Isaac does a deadlift fisherman suplex. That looks good. Um, for his comeback, Andre Gunn actually did drop kick. 
uh, that forced Isaac to the outside. He gets distracted a little bit because uh, Stell's talking about uh, something and um, Faye Valentine kind of tries to inter inter intervene. Isaac spits off. And then he realizes, hey! So he runs into the ring, eventually does a full Nelson to German suplex to Andre Gunn. Royce Isaacs wins. I was entertained by it. It was a good cheeseburger match. Then there was the highlights from the women's match. Um, Thunder Rosa is your new champion. Uh, Thunder Rosa, Melina, and, and Billy, what's her face is there? Uh, Thunder Rosa looks so great with the face paint, though. Um, yeah, whatever. You can tell that the, the belt looks so cheap, though. This literally looks like the old WWE belt. Women's belt that like the great Moolah had, or the fabulous Moolah had, from the great Moolah. No, the fabulous Moolah's belt so that had her picture in it. It just looks cheap and cheesy, and something like my niece and nephews made for me. It it looks I I, I can't believe I'm saying this. It actually looks worse than the AEW belt. The AEW belt women's belt looks terrible. Or at least it's just really. It doesn't look like a championship material. Ricky Starts comes out. He does an interview in promo, and then Zicky Dice interrupts him, and this leads to us a match. Because again, remember, Ricky Starts is your new television champion. These matches only last six minutes and five seconds. I forget why. And there's the lucky sevens rule. So every time Ricky Starks to defeat seven people, he gets a shot. At the world championship, and then I guess they drop the he drops the belt if he doesn't get it, and they started it again. So that's something to look forward to every so often because tournaments are always fun. Uh, so Zicky Dice, <laughs> class, he just looks like some so, some wrestler from the 70s and 80s, some some guy they dragged out of some bar in the south after he had too much oh Dixie beer or something, not even. Like cheap beer, just like beer made it like literally in like the bathtub or in the backwoods of like Georgia or Arkansas somewhere. Stuff you should never drink because you might die. From. And that's your fact of the day. The the reason why they call it the eye test. This match passed the eye test. The reason why they called the eye test because they would actually have glasses. I should have one somewhere. But if you put some liquor into that glass and put it by your eye and your eye starts to water, that means your liquor is not ready yet. It's not passing the eye test because there's a whole bunch of esters, um, ether, ketones, and a bunch of nasty stuff that will actually you. If you drink too much of that nasty stuff, it's called the heads of the alcohol. Those always have to get tossed out unless you don't know what you're doing. And then you're like, oh, oh, you just like the worst my nurse car while sitting in my apple pie and moonshine on top of my RV, which doubles as my house. So I'm a dumb southerner. But that's okay. That's to each their own, I guess. Uh, again, Starks has the arm drag, the drop kick. It's more traditional wrestling nowadays. Zicky Dice, again, he goes for the double axe handle from the top rope. Classic wrestling move. And Starks counters that by hitting a sideways double axe handle. Yes, 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 yes. Old school wrestling. I love it. Dice then just does the boot choke. Very heel. And a bear hug into a Northern Lights suplex. That's great. The open palm slap. Woo! That has some sting to it. I'll tell you what, Ricky Starks has a good sling blade. The worst sling blade is Britt Baker. Seth's okay, Finn's okay, but Starks, he perfected it though. Then he hit an inverted atomic drop, and I don't know what he calls it, but it's the fairy tale ending. Ricky Starks wins another cheeseburger match. Wow. 
And then there was a promo with, oh, that just ended with a promo. It was, that's weird. I don't know, I don't want to end with. Uh, Eli Drake and James Storm, they're going to, they're going to redo Beer Money. Yes, bring back Beer Money. Uh, they have their tag team belts, they give a promo. Aaron Stevens and the question marks there. This is just comic gold. For some reason, whatever, like, sounds chantable, the crowd will just, like, uh, James sort of says, yep, after I finish this beer, I'm going to go celebrate at a Chick-fil-A. So the whole crowd goes, Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A. This crowd chants anything. Uh, James Storm starts t- telling knock-knock jokes. <laughs> it seems like, so annoyed. Uh, eventually, Trevor Murdoch shows up. Because uh, Eli Drake, James Storm, so like, yep, we're going to go drink some. We're done. Uh, Aaron Stevens still there with a question mark. Trevor Murray comes out. He wants to challenge Aaron Stevens, who's the national champion. That'll be good. And then it ended with um, the villain! Yes! Martin Skull from Villain Enterprises. He shows up like, where's my interviewer? I have, I have stuff to do. But no, Nick Aldis shows up. Oh, what a shock. And the two of them have a pretty good back and forth conversation piece. And that was NWA wrestling. Wow. That was it? They only had two matches? I had two cheeseburger matches. Therefore, the NWA gets a cheeseburger rating. So with all that being said, um... That was Tuesday Night Wrestling. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to watch the watch the. It's not on Hulu, but it's a rerun of AEW. So I'll give you my feedback on AEW probably sometime tomorrow night, Friday night. We have some Friday Night SmackDown. In fact, I have to I have to change that. I have to like I have to edit stuff. I have to put my Friday Night SmackDown pizza pizza there because that's kind of what it is. Probably not 205, because right after SmackDown, it's like, because I actually get to watch it for a change. That's normal. I have to go to bed, because I have to wake up the next day. And hopefully my boss, when she does this, 